okay so I have added a few more points and if uh, now we look at the table you can see that there are some errors uh, that are occurring at some of the points for example my highest error is occurring at the last point I entered which is number nine and um, my overall error uh, RMS error is still uh, quite small so to see what this error means um, let's zo zoom into the last point I just entered so you can see that it's um, uh, the the point that I selected was the corner uh, of uh, the student services complex north east corner and after warping it, m it 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 sees that it has been moved a little bit so this is still first order transformation you will see that now a second order option has appeared because I have more ground control points and I can fit more comp function if I select the second order polynomial this error will reduce uh, you can again go back and forth and see how much error is reduced you can even look at the residual errors here uh, how they are reducing in a similar manner let's go to first order polynomial again and go to the whole image and see what happens when you do a second order polynomial the whole image gets warped uh, based upon the the ground control points and it tries to fit a a better model into your data so keep adding more points and you can cut paste from your PDF file uh, but there is no shortcut in this kind of work so um, try to enter more points to improve the accuracy of your uh, georeferencing okay so I have added some more points around and I hope you have also added similarly more control ground control points if we look at the table uh, we can see that now uh, there are some higher errors appearing and you can see that even higher order polynomial is appearing third order because there are more points that can be used to um, to uh, match the tra the image with ground control points so if you try the third polynomial see you will see that it will do some non-linear uh, just like the second polynomial more significant non-linearities will appear um, and uh, the the warping will change now it is usually higher order polynomials are good transformations as long as you have uh, rich ground control points so in this case if you go back to the first one you will see that it's probably doing a pretty reasonable job the error uh, at most is 0 0.00003 um, and if you go to the second one it's still quite, quite similar error um, but you can start seeing if that transformation is causing some deformations in the image that are not realistic for example if you compared the first order and the second order you may see some of the buildings uh, becoming uh, of uh, a geometrical shape that is non-realistic for example curved um, shapes of the roof or curved shapes of the roads uh, that would uh, may tell you that your ground control points have high errors so I'm gonna remove some high error ground control points for my first order transformation so for example the point the the point number 12 in my case has a very high error so I'm going to delete it which is just pressing the delete button takes care of that and similar manner I can delete uh, my last point 19 so you get the idea this way you can kind of play with maybe that point wasn't entered correctly and you can re-enter it uh, there are always human errors that can cause these uh, residual uh, RMS values to go up so once you have completed and um, are satisfied with the ground control points you have and the kind of errors you're seeing you can go ahead and save these ground control points and I'm gonna go ahead and save this in my lab 4 folder so that this material is available to me when I need and notice it's a text file so you don't have to um, 
um, you can even open it and see what the values are so GCPs um, I can I can call it UNLV GCPs uh, the txt file will be automatically added to it um, I believe so or let's actually put the dot txt there and press save so now this has saved any at any time if you want to load this you can click load and it will be available to to load these back once you have done this click OK and go to the georeferencing toolbar and here now you can uh, select the rectify button to uh, perform this georeferencing so in the georeferencing pull down uh, menu of the toolbar click rectify and it will ask you the information about how would you like to save the uh, rectified or georeference image now uh, let's pick the right folder which is in my case lab 4 uh, dad, lab 4 and <coughs> and give the format for this file now there are several formats that can be uh, output from this point it can be a TIFF file which is a georeference TIFF file uh, NV which is environment for visual interpretation it's another software uh, you can output the image for that software you can output the image in uh, other image formats for uh, ESRI can be GIF, G grid image. Uh, it can also be uh, an Imagine image, which is uh, Erdas Imagine software. Now, of course, you don't want to save the file as JPEG because um, the GeoRef in that case, the georeferencing image will be placed in separate uh, files. So, uh, I'm going to use TIFF, which is uh, also called GeoTIFF format and here in the name part you can give it uh, give this file a name it has automatically given it in given it a name called UNLV quick bird multispectral image one I'm gonna call it image geo ref which means it's geo reference and I'm gonna ask it not to do any compression uh, one thing that you should see that it through the process of um, uh, adding control points it has figured out the cell size uh, in the units that we have provided and you will see how this uh, comes out to be a uh, correct cell size now as it performs a rectification is it, it is going to move the pixels a little bit and when it moves the pixels it has to fill the gaps by resampling the data so that resampling, and we have talked about this resampling in the lecture, there are several types of resampling. So nearest neighborhood means fill the gap by uh, finding out what the other nearest neighborhood values are. Uh, then you can do uh, a continuous data bilinear interpolation and also uh, a convolution process which kind of brings to the same value, uh, which gives you um, a, a more... Uh, accurate value in terms of the surroundings but a lot of times it's a it's a it's a matter of choice based upon the need so in this case uh, we will pick bilinear interpolation and click save so after the rectification process completes you should see uh, that nothing on the screen has changed because you haven't uh, open the new image so click new to open a new and blank uh, map and now load the new image that you have created so in in my case I my geo rectified image is UNLV quick bird multi spectral image underscore GRF once I open it now if I move my cursor around you should see that it is seeing decimal degrees and it's showing them as those values but if you remember we still haven't told it what datum to use for these decimal degrees and you can check that by looking at the properties of this um, 
image and you will see that it has the cor correct extent but the spatial reference is still undefined so we have to tell this what the correct spatial reference is for that you need to open arc toolbox and inside the arc toolbox uh, go to data management tools this is the same menu that we have used before uh, in that there's a sub menu called projections and transformations and the last item in that is called define projection this is how we can define the projection of the system so if you double click that you will see that it's asking what input data set you want to use and you can click the folder browser here or in our case since it's already open we'll just select this and right here in the coordinate system we can select the NAD 1983 because if you look at your PDF file or your printout of the ground control points uh, it is specified that the survey was done using NAD uh, 1983 uh, uh, datum. So once you apply this, um, you can click OK and you will see that it will do the processing to define the projection for this layer. Now if you right click and look at the properties actually it is if you look at the status bar it is still doing that so you have to wait until it completes that so now if you uh, right click and look at the properties you will see that the spatial reference has been defined to NAD 1983 and all the relevant information is available so uh, now you can load this image with any other uh, layer file and you will see that different features will show exactly at the correct location. So this completes the tutorial on how to georeference a scanned image and associate a spatial reference to it using ground control points that come from survey or some other maps.